Hey, it's Gothy, and I'm doing a book review. Um, this one's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to get a little bit ranty here, and because it's a World of Warcraft novel that I've read, um, I'm going to be making reference to the game, so if you don't play the game, you might not have a clue what I'm talking about. Um, so, at some point there's going to be spoilers, because there is a part that I just need to, like, get off my chest and just rant about because I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Um, so I read the latest World of Warcraft book which is War Crimes by Christy Golden. Um, I have the ebook because um, the it hasn't come out in paperback yet and because most of my collection is paperback I want to wait till paperback. So yes, ebook and Actually, I need to show off, um, this is actually a Nexus cover, but I'm going to alter the inside so that it sits my e-reader in there because Spider-Man. Um, yeah, so uh, War Crimes is the uh, precursor to the next World of Warcraft expansion, which is Warlords of Draenor. Um, and it's, it's basically set right in the middle of the end of Mr. Pandaria and the beginning of Warlords of Draenor. Um, <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to the expansion and now that the game has gone into beta I'm really 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 hoping I get an invite because I want to go back to Draenor so much. Um, so it's really hard to give like a quick rundown of anything in World of Warcraft because there's just so much lore and you know things that you've got to remember so basically um, <clears throat> Mr. Pandaria um, a brand new land has been found um, it was protected by this enchanted mist and um, the effects uh, the events of Cataclysm which was the previous expansion of the game um, has caused you know disruptions all over Azeroth and <clears throat> that sort of caused all the mists and stuff to kind of start dissipating, so then Pandaria was discoverable. So both the Horde and the Alliance discover it in their own way, and at first they start kind of fighting to, because they both want to take control of it. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still a little sick, so... <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, so they both want to take control of it. Um, but there's already a race living there, and it's the Pandarans. Um, and they kind of say, look, you know, we get that you guys are bloodthirsty and you hate each other and whatever, but we've got our own shit happening here, so don't bring your shit here. We've got enough to deal with. Um, <clears throat> so then the Horde and the Alliance, not not necessarily team up, but they team up with the Pandaren, um, just to, to defeat the Shah and all the evil energies that are in Pandaria. Um, unfortunately, the leader of um, the Horde, uh, Garrosh Hellscream, becomes corrupted because you know that never happens in World of Warcraft just never no no one gets corrupted this is a brand new thing um <laughs> so Garrosh becomes corrupted he becomes um obsessed with the idea of a pure horde um and he starts just fucking everyone's shit up and <clears throat> so the last raid in Miss, in Miss Pandaria is the Siege of Orgrimmar uh, which is when um, Garrosh and his followers um, just start, you know, they take over Orgrimmar and they try to kill the trolls and he tries to kill Vol'jin, who is the leader of the trolls, um, who are also part of the Horde. You know, and he, he just does everything he can to piss everyone off. Um, he destroys Theramore, which is one of the Alliance towns, uh, using a mana bomb. Um, which is why Jaina Proudmoore now has a funky white strip. No, her hair is white and she has a yellow strip in her hair. Um, <clears throat> so, War Crimes takes part after Siege of Orgrimmar. Um, Siege of Orgrimmar, the last boss, is Garrosh Hellscream. Uh, midway through the fight, he becomes infused with the Shah, which are the evil energies um, in Pandaria. And instead of killing him, um, Varian Wynn, Rin, who is the leader of the Alliance, steps in and goes, no, 
we shouldn't kill him. Like, that's not our place to really decide that. Um, <clears throat> you guys need to decide who your new war chief is. And then we need to, you know, put him away and let the Celestials kind of have a trial and, you know, do all that. Um, so that's what ends up happening. Um, Vol'jin becomes the new war chief, which, um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm an undead lover myself, so I would love to see Sylvanas take over, but I have a feeling that in Warlords she's just gonna go completely psycho and badass and... I'm really looking for, I'm really hoping that happens soon. Um, so War Crimes is the trial, basically. So they defeat Dr Garrosh, they lock him up, and they decide to have a trial. I think it's a five day trial, so um, <clears throat> you've got um, Bane Bloodhoof from the Torrens who has to defend Garrosh. Um, and then uh, the Night Elf leader is picked to accuse Garrosh. So um, the two two of the Bronze Dragon flight are there as well, and they've got this hourglass. And um, anyone who's been playing Mr. Pandaria knows that you've been on these quests to um, help them create the hourglass um, on the Timeless Isle. So how you've been collecting all the um, the coins and stuff like that. Uh, the daily quests, that's all to make this hourglass. So this hourglass um, enables people to see a moment in the past. So they're all, you know, Karoz and... God damn. Nomi. Nomi? The one that likes to, you know, disguise herself as a gnome. Um, <clears throat> I always think Nomi. I don't know. Um... F forgetting names, forgetting names. Again, there's so much World of Warcraft history and stuff that it just gets a little much. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, Karoz and everyone's like, oh, no, no, the, the hourglass is harmless and it only shows the past. Yeah. So, now this is where it's going to get, not, not quite spoilery, because we know what's going to happen, uh, we know what happens, because we already have a sort of um, storyline, I guess, for the next expansion. So the next expansion is kind of a time travel expansion. Um, Garrosh finds a way to go back to Draenor um, before the fell corruption of the Orcs. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to be really awesome. Um, I'm going to be sitting there, you know, fangirling a bit when Thrall meets his parents, because um, anyone who's familiar with Warcraft lore knows that Thrall was a baby when his parents were killed, so he never got to meet them, and he was actually raised by Alliance, um, with the purpose being um, of him becoming the leader of um, an Alliance army to defeat the Orcs and the Horde. So, yeah, um, that's going to be really interesting. I'm looking forward to that. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so we already know that's going to happen, so... It's actually a member of the Bronze Dragon Flight and someone else who helps Garrosh go back to Draenor um, to go back in time. Um, so it's Karoz um, who does. And this is where it's going to get, you know, super spoilery, spoilery. But, okay, so anyone who's been playing the game, you know, we've been going through the legendary quest process with Rathian and... He just seems really dodgy. He is the one that locks up Garrosh's guards and gets the, the cuffs and stuff off him and helps Karoz get Garrosh back. And I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew he was an evil little turd burger. Although, it's hard because I don't think he's strictly evil. I think he's just... Really, I think like Garrosh, he's obsessed with this idea of having, you know, this this perfect idea for Azeroth, and he's just going the wrong way about it. But I knew it. I knew he was a dodgy little turbo. And yeah, like pretty much, I read that, and then I went to my housemate. And I'm just like, I have to tell you this, and I know you're not gonna understand it, but you know, and I kind of went into the same sort of little ranty thing and explained it a little, and I'm just like, I fucking knew it. Ah. Oh. 
So, yes. Now, I am really, really, really looking forward to Warlord's Adrenal. Um, it was actually really interesting because when they sent Gorosh through the um, time portal from the hourglass, um, <clears throat> in order to distract everyone, they had a two-tiered attack. Um, one was outside, um, Zayella of the Dragon Moor, um, who's actually still alive, um, who supports Garrosh. Um, she managed to get a goblin who had a zeppelin and um, a blood elf and just a whole heap of people who are supporters of Garrosh, um, sort of, and a bunch of pirates from Northrend. So they just drop the pirates in and let the pirates kill everyone they want and then they take off when, you know, oh, the distraction's done, see you later. Oh, ha ha, you thought you were going to get out with us. <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> and on the inside, when Garrosh goes through the portal, um, they've set it up so that alternate versions of each of the leaders of the factions come through. Um, oh, actually, not Sylvanas, because Sylvanas doesn't go to the last day because she is pissed the fuck off. And she's just running around killing things and, you know, she's just doing her own thing. But, so, they have, like, alternate versions of themselves. So, Thrall has the version of himself where um, he never escaped from the Alliance, uh, where he never escaped from Blackmoor. And he is the leader of an Alliance army that does kill orcs. Um... A version of Anduin comes through where he's king because his father's died and he is, you know, just really soft and, you know, not just, he just sits there and cries and his, Anduin's copy actually dies in this part, so Anduin's just kind of freaked, like, I just watched myself die, man, like, the fuck. Um, and the dragon, um, Caligos. Um, a version of himself comes through that's completely mad, um, you know, and they're just fighting themselves, you know, there's a version of Bane that comes through, and I think there was a version of Varian as well, maybe, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but yeah, it was a really good way, I thought it was a very, very thought out, you know, very thoughtful way to distract the people on the inside from trying to get through the portal, um, to follow them, so... So this is where Warlords comes in, and we're gonna we're all gonna go back to Draenor, and we're all gonna try and fix anything that Goros tries to change. Um, but we're also gonna try and stop them from becoming fell corrupted. And I don't know. For me, I think the expansion after Warlords is gonna be um, similar to Burning Crusade, where we're gonna go that sort of timeline, go through the timeline again, but everything's gonna be different. So we might never see um, Deathwing come back or, you know, it's just going to be really cool. Um, and I think the Emerald Dream part's going to come in at some point as well, probably towards the end of Warlords because I don't think Emerald Dream would be its own expansion. I think it would just be like a pre-expansion thing. So, yeah, but it's going to be a very interesting expansion. I want into the beta. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, give me better and right. Um, well, now that it's beta. And, yes, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, this was another good read. I gave it a 5 out of 5 on Goodreads. Um, Christy Golden is fantastic. Um, she writes some vampire novels as well. Um, she doesn't just do World of Warcraft. She's done... I think she's done Star Wars as well. And... I think she does StarCraft too, um, so she does quite a few gaming related ones. Um, Christy Golden also plays World of Warcraft, so yay. Um, and yes, I this is kind of like a specialised book review, I don't know if a lot of people are going to be interested in this, but even if you're not interested in playing the games, I very much recommend reading the books. Um, it's quite a long series of books. Um, you can get a list of the order to read them in off Wikipedia, so that's pretty easy to get a hold of. And yeah, um, that's about it for this review, and I can't wait for Warlords, and 
I probably made a mistake in reading the book so soon because there's still another couple months before um, the official date for Warlords being released comes out. We have like a tentative date which is supposed to be um, between November and December. So, actually that's not too long away. I want it now. <laughs> um, yes, so hopefully we get Warlords soon or I get beta and I mean, if I get beta and there's no non-disclosure agreement, I'll be putting videos up as well, because why not? <coughs> <coughs> oh dear god. Um, as you can see, I'm still kind of sick, so I'm going to leave this here, go get some more water, and then take a break and then film my next one. So I'll see you guys.